Uh, counselor? There's a raccoon stuck in the vending machine. That's so annoying. I wanted a snack. Welcome to Trail Mix, our mini episodes from Camp Counselors Podcast. Each week, the stories come from you, our Camp Shady Birch campers. We want to hear your juicy gossip, top secret confessions, embarrassing and scary stories, and sprinkle in our sage counselor advice. Trail Mix is for the campers. And God, do we love you. Hey, Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back. To trail mix. This is our mini episode where we read listener submitted stories. Woo woo! Before we get into today's episode, I have something heavy on my heart I want to talk about. Um, stop joking, stop laughing, everybody. This is really serious. I have a new addiction. I've spoken about it briefly on the main show, but um, I am in so deep with the New York Times games right now. They're slaying me. Connections is so fun, and I'm still playing Wordle, and I'm not ashamed of it. 11.55 last night. You were like, shit, I got to get in bed and I got to finish these up so I can finish it before midnight. Because if I play it, okay, I, it was a, there's a, we're, it's touch and go. It's touch and go. It's simply touch and go. We had five minutes before the end of the day. And if I play after that, then I lose the opportunity to play today's game or yesterday's game. So now I can play today's game. And enjoy. I it's a small moment of peace for myself. But guess what, campers? In three and a half minutes, I completed both games and I won both games. Not my best connections game, but I still won. I love that one. That one's so exciting. It's just connecting how all four words come together. Some of them are crazy though. That's like, the point. It shouldn't be easy. This isn't a children's book. I know it shouldn't be easy, but I'd love to be in the little think tank when they're coming up with the concepts for each game. Cause sometimes I'm like they didn't know how successful it was going to be. And they're like, shit, guys, we got to come up with something different this week. They have a million other things going on. I know. Well, it's one of the game, one of the um, categories one week was um, like basketball teams. And I was like, okay, now, now you're, now you're getting dirty. Now you're playing really, really dirty. I like it when it's a gardening, like that's a category I can compete in. I can't compete in basketball teams. I'm like, I saw the Spurs and you lost me at the rest of them. You really did. I saw somebody made a TikTok pretending that they were on like the team coming up with the ideas. And they said, these words go together because they are each words that have different meanings. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's where we're at sometimes. Well, Wordle is getting controversial too. They had a, one of the words this week was Sally. And I did get it correct. I don't know how, by the grace of God, I got Sally correct. Well, is that a word? Does it have a meaning or is that a name? There was a viral TikTok and I didn't do any further research, but this guy was pissed. He was like, that's a that's like a... A proper noun. It's not like what it, the usual categories is. But you know how like some words like that might have another meaning other than just fields. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, it might. I don't know. It could be like for all I know. That's like oh, it's a it's a fishing knot. I'm like okay, it's, uh, give me a Sally. I I see a, a salmon in the river. I don't know. But- or it could be an emotion. Like I'm honest. I'm gonna be honest. I'm feeling Sally. What would you describe feeling Sally as? Because now I'm intrigued. Just like silly on the outside, but sad on the inside. Wait, I'm getting emotional. My eyes are watering because that is exactly what it is. Look, I'm crying. You were doing... Are you okay? No, because... the last episode, the full episode, episode 80, you were crying in almost every section. Sometimes when either I'm sad or I'm just really excited or it's a big emotion for me, like, that was just so creative that I got overwhelmed with emotion. That, that was just really... Because you didn't have that can bit. You That was right off the top of your noggin. That was really smart. And I'm proud of you. Thank you. Are you feeling Sally? No, I'm just feeling silly. Anyways, <laughs> welcome to today's episode. We have a lot of great stories for you, campers. So we're going to get into it. I have a story of, of oh, I have actually a camper asking for advice on how to deal with a stinky situation. Oh, God, I've got a story about a camper who took things to extreme measures to keep up with a lie for a man. Oh, haven't we all though? Mm. Um, I have a story about a camper who blacked out in the most embarrassing way I've ever read. <laughs> and a house party that gets a little out of hand with a grandma who has dementia that nobody would believe. Let's get into it, campers. This is a really big secret. Thank God we're on a body of water. This is Confession Canoe. Welcome back to Confession Canoe. If you've got something to confess, write on in. It's in the title. Forgive me, counselor, for I have sinned. Oh my God. <gasps> we, should, confession. we should st- Dart things off like that. I love that. I love that We're too. on our A game right now. We're creative. Hey, happy counselors. I discovered your podcast a couple months ago and have been listening obsessively. I am almost caught up. So sad. That is so crazy to me that people listen to so many hours of us just like yapping. There's a lot of episodes out there. There is. 
But luckily, I have a ton of Patreon content to keep me company. Love that. Hi, Patreon. Hey, Captain Five. I was just listening to a Trail Mix episode where a fellow camper, hey, girl, everybody's just like shouting everybody out. Hey. <laughs> um, a camper got her boyfriend kicked off every dating app. Okay, yeah, I remember that one. She mentions that we're all a little crazy sometimes. I was like, not me, girl. I'm totally sane. But then I remembered. Mm. <laughs> okay, buckle up for this one. In my 20s, I was dating a guy that I worked with. He was my superior, so I wanted to keep it quiet, and he agreed. I figured if we worked out, I would just leave the job and find a new one. Don't don't set yourself up in a relationship like that. Just don't do it. We were together for about six months when he started getting really sketchy, flaky, distant, and not at all there for me when I needed him. I confronted him about it and he gaslit me about expecting too much from him. I'm a pretty strong woman when it comes to guys fucking with me, or so I thought. So I ended things with him right then and there. We could have just left it at that, but he kept pushing his narrative about me being needy. So I yelled, I had surgery and you weren't even there for me. Um, what? I never had a surgery. (laughs) Camper. (laughs) Where did that come out of? (laughs) Sometimes in the heat of something, you just want to make a point so bad that isn't valid and you just make it anyway. Well, that's exactly what she did. Okay, things are going to start to spiral. I hadn't had so much as a paper cut while we were together. I have no idea where that came from. You might think that was my moment of crazy, but just wait. We, of course, got back together because that's what us ladies do in our 20s. It could have been great, but guess who, quote, had surgery and had nothing to show for it? I didn't want him to find out that I lied about it because obviously this relationship was going to last forever. Spoiler alert, it didn't. Turns out he was married the entire time. Oh, my God. I just want to highlight that moment right there because we never circle back to it. This man was married the whole time this was happening. I know two people in my life that have dated a married man without knowing that they were married. And it, it, I don't think it's uncommon or as crazy as we think it is. It's definitely not right. I'm not justifying it. But it seems to have happened to a lot of people. Having an affair takes so much time management and creativity and lying. I just, I could, I well, could if never. you don't have a hobby, try an affair. <laughs> no, terrible Wait. advice. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's get that stitched on a pillow. So I needed to keep the charade going. I did some research about surgeries that had minimal recovery time and learned that ovarian cysts are removed laparoscopically, mm-hmm. meaning they take, they make two small slits in your abdomen and go in with rods and cameras and blast those little fuckers. You're left with just two small scars. It was my only option, so I took a deep breath and let the crazy flow out of me. Okay, just like trigger warning, If you, just fast forward 20 seconds if you're not into like surgeries and things like that. I took a butter knife and heated it up on the stove, clenched my teeth, and pressed the hot knife into my abdomen <gasps> twice. Oh my, what a girl, what are you doing? The man is not worth it. I still cringe when I think about this and my headspace at the time. Obviously, that relationship ended and all I'm left with are my literal scars from it. Every time I see them, I'm reminded of my moment of crazy and feel humbled. Though I'm not proud of the action, while at a dermatologist having a first annual mole check, my doctor saw the scars and said, laparoscopic surgery? I said, yes, ovarian cysts, beaming with pride at my handiwork. So I guess they're still a little crazy there. Love you, ladies. The crazy bitch in cabin six. Yeah, because you are crazy. Because if you're going to lie to the doctor to continue this narrative, like, listen, like... The jig is up. You're crazy, but, like, this is totally my style of crazy. Like, uh, nothing will make you crazier than a man. It's funny. Every man I've ever dated, I've worked with. Because now we work together. Oh, yeah, but we didn't work together first. I know, but I'll always rope you into some sort of Ponzi scheme. <laughs> Ponzi scheme. What does that I even mean? That. That's just a fun thing to say. I think it's the guy's name. Oh, Ponzi? Joe Ponzi? Joe, sure. Maybe. I don't know. Joe I love Porca? a Ponzu sauce. Mm. What's that? That's that little dip you put in when you get like a like gyoza. <gasps> Oh, like a like a soy sauce. Oh, of it's a, a sore? it's a soy base for Ooh, sure. Now I want a gyoza. Okay, I've got another confession canoe. Hi, bitches. Me again. Are you sick of hearing me? Don't be, please. You're this doing is a my back job. To back. I'm doing a back to back, uh, counter to back to front. We literally never do that, and now we're doing it two weeks in a row. Oh my god, I'm scared. Are you scared? I'm frightened. I'm I'm freaking out. I'm Sally. Confession canoe. <laughs> Hi, camp counselors. First off, love the pod. I have a long commute to work and you both keep me laughing the whole way. As a residential physician in dermatology, (gasps) wait, unplanned. 
<laughs> unplanned. <laughs> Do you know Camper from the first story? Can you imagine? My God. It's so nice to have a part of my day be straight up joy and laughter. I found you after cackling to a reel of Zach talking about the friendly talking about friendlies, which is surprisingly relatable. To be honest, the Reese's Cup Monster Sunday will always hold a special place in my heart. What the monster mash? Long live the monster uh, mash. I'm craving friendlies. They sent me merch after that. I have an authentic plastic fribble cup for like the milkshakes we have one downstairs it's pretty freaking cool also john i'm a maniunk native so i loved hearing about your trips to the record store on main street hi now to the good stuff after this week's episode mentioning a camper having a lingerie themed party in high school i had to throw my hat in the ring with my unhinged high school party story the year was 2012 the era of Nicki Minaj, wet seal, and skinny jeans. It was our senior year spring of high school, a time where all cares are lost. What a great time. Gangnam style. Does wet seal still have a presence in, in the, the retail community? Because when I was, when I, that was, we're like the same age, me and this camper. And like they were on top of their game. Wet's, yeah, I don't think Wet Seal is still in the game at all. You know who's maintained their spot, which we I can like say because I just saw them in the mall? Windsor. If you would have, if I would have looked at a Windsor 15 years ago and said this is still going to be around in 15 years from then, like I would have said absolutely not, not a Windsor, a wet seal maybe, but they're Windsor lays because I think Windsor has a real good hold on the prom and junior banquet community, right? Which is like a small portion of the year. We should check what their stocks are if they're yeah, public. But the price of a prom dress compared to the price of a wet seal tankini, priceless. Can't compare them. You know what I mean? Different different levels. Uh, a little background. I have a twin sister and an old sister. We all an have old this, sister? an older sister. Did she I say old sister? And an old sister. <laughs> She's an old little gremlin. <laughs> that little, I mean, that old sister. You know that old one. Wait, I'm obsessed with that. I don't have older siblings. I have old siblings. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in Pet Cemetery, the sister who lives in the attic. Do you know that lady? No. Someone out there does. She's scary. Well, there's someone that lives in this attic. Okay, so I have a twin sister and an old sister. We all have the same birthday. <laughs> that is unbelievable if i was 10 i'd be pissed if i was 28 i'd be obsessed yeah oh my god especially if y'all are tight have that party together that's so, what are the chances also twins are kind of spooky twins are so spooky but like growing up watching sweet life of zach and cody like it's all i ever wanted yeah it's like you want one but i feel like like they're up to no good ever but i've never met a twin that doesn't love their other twin they're obsessed with each other it's like such a connection and they'll talk about like you don't get it because you're not a twin and i'm embarrassed because it's like i don't I, get it and i want it so bad and i'll never get it i want to be a twin so bad and i'll never there's nothing anyone can do for me about it Stop cloning sheep, fucking assholes. <laughs> Clone me. I want my twin. I volunteer. Sorry, man. Now you're tearing up again. Because I want a twin. Oh, he's, <laughs> you're being Sally right now. I have an old brother. <laughs> okay, so my old sister, we'll call her Emily. She did write it properly. I'm just being so crazy right now. My old sister, we'll call her Emily, was a senior in college. Many may know that your relationship with an older sibling can really dictate your life in high school. Emily was simply a badass bitch. I had my first job bussing tables at the restaurant she waitressed at, often meeting in the bathroom stalls to spill the tea. Oh my God, I love that. That's so Vanderpump. <laughs> She also was the the cool kind of sister who would buy us alcohol and taught us how to shave our legs. Anyway, back in 2012, my sisters and I devised a plan. We saved up our meager earnings to buy our parents a trip to Vegas. My parents were thrilled. They had such hardworking, selfless daughters. But little did they know, we conspired to throw the house party to end all house parties while they jetted off to Vegas. We spent the week planning our party. Emily brought all the alcohol while my twin sister, our best friends, and I spread the word and collected supplies. That week, I had broken up with a boy that was a tad bit too clingy, and my soon-to-be college self was ready to leave him in the dust. That's very, like, similar to the last story with the lingerie party of what happened. Yeah, I think that's the transition of life at that point. It's like, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling like an adult, and this is no longer serving me. And it's like, girl... You made the right call. I don't think at 17, anyone's like, this is it. Some people it is. He kept asking other people to come to the party, but I didn't want him there. So I declined. What a fucking weirdo. The night finally came. The guy, right? Not the girl. Yes. The guy. Yeah. The ex. Yeah. Sorry. I was talking about <laughs> Not you camper. 
The night finally came. Soon, the party was out of control. <laughs> As I walked through the house, I was met with a menagerie of craziness. I love that word. A menagerie? I would say menagerie, but I like the way you pronounce Vegas and Vegas and menagerie. I won't be torn down. No, you're not. I'm not torn you down. I'm just poking. I won't be poked. <laughs> nor provoked. A 400 pound football player, well, I don't know if we need to include that. A 400 pound <laughs> football player lay naked in my parents' jacuzzi tub. A single bite was taken out of every apple in the refrigerator. I didn't read that part the first time around. Who is doing that? Just when when you're 17 and feeling feral, you're just barking at the bit. Like you're just like, like you just need to get it out of you. Like I would do that. I would do that honestly in high school too. Like the same person who was like "rar" means I love you in dinosaur would be like, how crazy would it be if I took a bite out of every fucking pink lady in the fridge? And everybody just trying to like one up each other and just be even crazier. So it's like. So this next person definitely one upped it by lighting paper towels on fire. See, like that's when I don't think it's funny. Now I'm like, now we're just being just like destructive in a way that could actually hurt us. And I'm no longer co-signing this joke and I want you to leave. And one of my friends was vomiting into my mom's 90s vintage La Crusade Dutch oven in my pink childhood bedroom. We, grabbing the heavy Dutch oven and then bringing it up the stairs to vomit in the bedroom. Maybe it was already in the bedroom. Why would the La Crusade already be in the bedroom? We both know somebody who eats a mac and cheese out of a pot in the bedroom. Kira. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, my noni, God rest her soul, lived next door. We had shared a backyard with my grandparents. Unfortunately for my sweet Italian grandmother, she had a diagnosis of dementia. Oh. She often heard voices that weren't there and made sandwiches for imaginary children that lived in her attic. Wow, that's a lot of bread. Even though we're joking here, like, that is, it is really sad. Like, let me just clear the air on that. No, it is sad. But, like, the camper is highlighting this with humor. You'll get to it. And I can make a silly bit about the bread. Yeah, it's Sally. <laughs> well, it's that making jokes about dementia is Sally. It is. It's silly on the outside, but inside. It's sad on, it's sad on the inside. Wait, this is not a joke. After this episode, you need to trademark that. Sally. Because I really believe that's what Wordle meant. Is the I think it was too. You are so smart. Can I'm ahead of my time. You, you're so Sally. Some would say. I hope <laughs> never. Nobody's ever told me that, but I hope some people say it. Um, <laughs> you're being Sally again. Well, had it not been for her dementia, we would have been caught red. Handed. On the night of the party, she was calling my mom to explain that there were kids yelling and fighting in the street at our house. My mom in Vegas at the time eased her concerns, explaining that it was just the voices in her head and nothing was awry. <laughs> Little did my mom know, Noni was truly seeing the wild night unfold before her very eyes. Oh, poor Noni. She's like, everyone thinks I'm crazy. It's like, Noni, you're right this time. And mom's at the slot machine, shaking her yabos. She yes, like, Noni's hearing voices again. She's like, I'm on vacation. I deal with this enough. And she felt safe in Vegas knowing that her La Crusade was tucked away in storage. Yeah. Safely was, in a cupboard. She's listening to the sweet serenades of Celine Dion at the Bellagio while someone's biting all of her honey crisps. <laughs> <laughs> the din of the party. What does that mean? The what? The din. D-I-N. The dine. Oh, I don't know. The she's din of the party. <laughs> she's a clever writer, so I trust her. The din of the party was soon drowned out by a loud knocking at the front door. That's never good. It was the cops. I would later find out that the boy I broke up with that week had placed the call. What an ugly little fucking narc. Yeah, where is he so we can hit a baseball bat against his shins? Oh my God. I'll do it. Or a Razor scooter. But in our pea-sized child brains, we decided that they couldn't come in without a search warrant unless someone opened the door. Period. <laughs> We guarded the door with our lives. Meanwhile, people started jumping ship. By jumping ship, I mean that people were literally jumping out of the second story windows. Oh my God, I'm literally having, oh, a memory just came back to me that I, I had forgot. I'll tell you in a second. They were jumping out of second story windows of our house, landing in the neighbor's yard atop their hedges. This happened to me. I was running out of this guy's house party. It was like a, a mezzanine where you could see down into the lobby. And there were cops at the front door banging in, telling me to like let them in. And I was like, I'm not letting them in. I don't live here. So I had to run out the only other exit in this city building, which was the back alleyway off a of fire escape. I jumped off a of fire escape. This is the thing with that. Like, I've also been at parties where the cops show up. 
I'm going to be so real with everybody. It is never that serious. Unless you're like, unless you've literally robbed a bank, you have someone held captive, the cop is going to tell you to stop and they're going to leave. Like to jump out of a building window onto shrubbery, it was never that serious. It was never that serious. Yeah, this one maybe, the one that I was talking about had... um, Were there drugs at the party? Oh, yeah. Okay, well then, here we go. Um, Sorry, mama. (laughs) Some got away. Others were apprehended by the police. In true ride-or-die fashion, no one snitched. Except your narc of an ex-boyfriend. You did the right thing by breaking it off with Yeah, him. what's his address? We have a plan. Yeah, we're going to post it on the internet. <laughs> the police remained outside, shining their lights on the windows. Go home. Seriously. We piled into the attic crawl space with the stragglers crouching down under the nails coming through the top of the roof. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, the shingles are nailed in. So yeah. Those are, like, coming through the roof for three hours. So they're all hunched up there like flowers in the attic. Insulation everywhere. I'm oh getting itchy. <laughs> what is this? Fiberglass? Shut the fuck up, Sarah. They're right outside. And everybody's, like, slowly becoming hungover. Later, everyone slept on the floor awaiting the morning. So everybody just slept in the attic. Cool. Morning came, we let out a collective breath of relief because the police never made it in. An idiot requested that everyone stay to make breakfast. Can you imagine going through all that and they're like, hey, homemade McMuffin sure does sound good right now. Honestly, that is so me though. I'm like, listen, we got through this together. I have some blueberries. Someone get the flour. We can make a pancake. (laughs) Who ate all the apples? What the fuck? (laughs) Um, okay, morning came, some asshole was like, hey, let's make breakfast, but the house was in disarray, and rightfully so, we kicked everyone out. In the days that followed, we had a few calls to our landline from the local police department requesting to speak to our parents. As a countermeasure, I blocked every police department phone number within the 10-mile radius for calling. How do you block a phone number on a landline? Um, you can, I definitely did that on my landline for sure. This wasn't like the rotary phone. There was definitely some changes in upgrades in between my comcast phone i could do that for sure oh yeah i never really... i think i had blocked someone's number but who who was i beefing with at that point the library we're like i'm not returning the bailey school kids kira my friend kira you guys know she has a book from the library for like four months i'm like did you renew it she's like they'll they'll figure it out i'm like what does that mean kira they'll figure it out like <laughs> so you'll figure it out <laughs> figure it out yeah they'll figure out that they're missing it she's like i'll get they're just letting your charges rack up my god um that monday my twin sister and i were called into the principal's office oh they got the school involved we sat down and he asked so what happened at your house over the weekend i heard it was a banger <laughs> i'm just kidding you didn't say that can you imagine <laughs> what the fuck was my, my <laughs> stupid bitch did you guys drink fucking shooters <laughs> We denied all of the accusations. Campers, come on. Let's be serious. There's nothing to joke around. This is not Sally right now. No, this is not. This is underage drinking and when it needs to be handled. We denied all the accusations and having no proof, we weren't punished. Nobody took a single picture. No, because this was a good crew. Other than that one bad bit in Apple that was the ex, everybody else was, (laughs) they were like solid. That was funny. Thank you for acknowledging one of my jokes. No, that was really, that's so niche. Like, where else are you going to use that where it makes sense? Just here. Just, just here. Here. My God, you guys. This but is I'm, like quality content. Jesus. I'm just glad they're denying it because if there is no proof, why am I going down? And first of all, I'm sorry, are we in school principal Jenkins? Yeah, Fuck off. What do you have to do with what I'm doing at home? He wanted to have a fucking awesome shooter. <laughs> yeah, he was just trying to like really put his foot down. Shut up. My God. Where was I? Uh, Okay, we weren't punished. We were the talk of the school. And a few weeks later, we graduated unscathed. Hell yeah. Fucking exit. Everyone's going to remember that moment. Our parents never found out about the party until years later. They never realized that the ping pong balls, which were scattered out from under all of our furniture for the next few years, were lost beer pong balls. An inside joke that never got old to my sisters and I. Our parents are also really cool people, confirms when my dad made a makeshift bowl out of toilet paper roll and aluminum foil to smoke with us. (laughs) On our second New Year's Eve as college students, don't do that. Don't make a tinny. That's not good for your lungs. That night, we decided to spill the beans. The five of us laughed, and our parents couldn't believe that our now-deceased Noni, bless her soul, was right all along. 
Sincerely, the Durham Doc in Cabin 5 with a line out the door for free Botox, Blasting Gloria by Laura Branigan over the camp loudspeakers. We have never had a camper offered to be our camp dermatologist offering free cosmetic surgery. Yeah. Botox, you guys? That's just an injectable. It's not a surgery, so you don't have to tell anybody you've ever gotten worked on. It was an injectable. It's different. Pro um, bono. Pro bono. Thank you so much. That was a really funny story. That was a funny story. I feel like that was <laughs> wasn't that long of a story. We just took no because quite the time. All I want is a twin now, and I can't get over it. This episode of Camp Counselors is sponsored by BetterHelp. Some days your social battery is low, and that's okay. Not every day is going to be your A plus day. But when the social battery becomes more of a routine, and it's more off days and on days, maybe it's time to consider some professional help. Campers, I just want to see you fly. I want to see you soar like the beautiful bald eagles above this camp. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. I habitually spread myself so thin in what feels like almost every aspect of my life, and that's why therapy has been so impactful for me. Talking to somebody every single week about what's going on, my issues, my highs, my lows, and how to manage all of my stress has been a game changer for me. My social battery has never felt higher. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to be matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash camp today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash camp. So Kelly, do you really think any of your girls are going to surpass Matthew Stafford, Super Bowl champ, as an athlete? I mean, I would have thought so, and then I watched him play basketball, so no. Harsh, Kelly B. I feel like I just tell them what they can do better, you know? When you're talking in these adorable little girls at night, I hope you're not reminding them that they have a very limited future. Uh, but, but Hank, that's honesty, and that's me. Okay, so you're harsh. I'm definitely the sweet, the fluff, if you will. And if you listen to this podcast the morning after with you, Kelly Stafford, and me, Hank Winchester. Hold on, hold on. Fluff like... like marshmallow fluff. You get it, girl. You know, sweet, smooth. You spread it on a sandwich. Delicious. Well, then if you're that, what the hell am I? You are tough. You are tough, old, rotten, sourdough (laughs) bread. Wow, Hank. Wow. Listen, I am just saying this podcast has some real hard truths. You're going to have to deal with it. But overall, we're pretty sweet and enjoyable, too. So true. And let's face it, everyone from the outside looking in thinks I have my stuff together. But I'm just like everyone else. I struggle with parenting. I struggle with marriage. I struggle with carpools. All of it. You're just carpooling in a much nicer car than all of us all are. <laughs> so come have a splash with us. Listen to the Morning After podcast with me, Kelly Stafford, and Hank Winchester. Available wherever you get your podcast. Are we qualified to be giving advice? No. Are we going to do it anyway? Absolutely. Welcome back to my time. This is Dear Counselors. This is a really good one, you guys. I I was just, it's actually, I don't know if you guys think it's as funny as I did, but I was like in tears reading this. Hi, friends. I'm writing in from Northern Canada. I've been listening to the pod since the start. I hated podcasts before, y'all. The only thing I can think to say to start it is that, Zachariah, you do need to watch Elemental. I was hesitant at first, too, but that little fire girl made me cry. Thank you for saying that. I still have. No, it's. I'm gonna make it a mystery of the mystery of the world at this point. It's like real. It's like I just don't need it. I'm just yeah. not interested in it. Me neither. Have you seen Luca? I have not seen it. I really like Luca, and I think a lot of people don't care about it. And I'm always, I'm always on Luca PR. See, I feel the same way about Elements and Luca. So maybe there is something there. You also feel that way about Tim, 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 so you just go pop. No, that one I like, Encanto. Everyone loves Encanto, and I refuse. He I won't can't. watch it, guys. It, and here's the thing is it's not like, it's not as great as the others, but it was still good. Yeah, you're really hyping it up, so when I watch it one day, I'm going to be disappointed. Okay, start the story, please. Anyway, I need advice. Is it anyways or anyway? I think it's anyway. I'm not sure. She wrote anyway, and I think she's correct. Anyway, I need advice. And the situation is a doozy, so buckle in. I live with my boyfriend and my best friend. My best friend moved in slightly after our lease started as she left her boyfriend and needed somewhere to go. We have a two-bedroom, so I said, say less, come live with us, and lower our rent, winky face. My partner was on board and understood the situation. She moved in and brought her dog. Now, I am no dog lover. I have two cats. I made an exception for my partner's dog, Dango, as he makes sure he is cared for and is cleaned up after. But now we have another one living with us. 
and he is stinky. Oh no, stinky dog. So her boyfriend has a dog, but she doesn't care because the boyfriend takes care of the dog. But now the friend's moving in with the, her stinky dog. Dingo? His No, Dango is the good dog. Dango. The stinky dog is Hubba. Oh, that he sounds like a hubba. And he's older and he wears a diaper. Oh, that's why he's stinky. Uh, he's so stinky. Both dogs are medium big, so they don't go unnoticed. I like love that feature. So I'm like, yeah, you definitely, you see hubba walking in with his cataracts and his big old diaper reeking off the place. <laughs> Not the diaper. She goes, I hate hubba. <laughs> I think we... <laughs> Like, this is so unserious that she's like, I had to talk to you guys about it. I this. hate Hubba. <laughs> Hubba's like farting and shitting. And he's like, what? I didn't ask to be here. You think I want to live like this? She goes, my boyfriend always has to make sure he is fed and taken out so his stinky diaper doesn't fester. <laughs> <laughs> And my best friend is fairly neglectful of him. This is a nightmare. I can't, I'm getting sweaty. Oh my God, I was laughing just like it was last night. Um, it has come to the point that it's expected of us, aka my man, to make sure he he poops that day. <laughs> to make matters worse, my bestie got back together with her icky ex-boyfriend. And now she stays there most nights, but kind of lives with us. Anyways, Hubba is more often... Than not left with us to deal with. Oh. Now the question I post for you two is, do we bring it up or did we wait too long? <laughs> oh no. Because it really is. It's like, she's not like, do I say something or not? She's like, did I just wait too long to bring this up? The, Kimber, this is such a funny thing to ask for advice for. We didn't mind when she was depressed and bouncing back from a breakup, but she just ran back to the homie and we are still in the same pickle. She did mention she is looking for a place with her boyfriend this summer. She goes, that will end well again. So is it worth it to wait it out? I can't even get into the emotionally abusive and neglectful boyfriend issues because with this dog, it's so touchy and she has never um, had an open mindset. Did I mention I'm allergic to these dogs? (sighs) Sincerely, the camper with hives in cabin five. Oh my God. So, okay. This is, it's it's not even a problem. It's definitely a pickle. It's a pickle. It's a smelly pickle. You, we Okay, my heart goes out to Hubba because Hubba didn't do anything. Like Hubba is just trying to get through the day. And at the end of the day, you've acknowledged a lot of this story. It's your boyfriend's responsibility, which is not his, it's not fair to him, but. No, it's not, but God bless him. Yeah, so I think you are allergic. When <laughs> That's our advice. When she came in, maybe I missed this part in the story. When she came in because she was down on her luck and they had just broken up, what was the initial conversation for length of time? So she said that they had just signed their lease, so I, maybe they just assumed. Like she'd stay for the whole the whole gig? So, well, right now, I think you wrote this in early March, maybe or late February. We're getting closer, and I'm really interested to see if anything's blown up because it's definitely been a few weeks since you've written this in. I personally, what I would do... Like what I the advice would be to talk to her. I would ignore it. I that's not good advice, but like I know myself, I would just keep on keeping on. You know what I mean? How important is the friendship, truly? Because you don't want to piss her off. She is in a vulnerable state, even though they're back together. Like you've already acknowledged that the boyfriend sucks. You really can't do much about that. And it sucks. I have friends that are in really tricky relationships. And when some people speak out, it then ends the friendship, which was longer and more foundational than the relationship. But people always seem to pick the relationship over the friendship. When friendships really have nothing to gain from you, other than just a mutual love and respect, when relationships can be manipulative. So really like you need to trust your friends more than we all collectively do. Because what are they gaining from being honest? They don't live with you. They're not getting money from you. You know what I mean? That's true. It also sucks in the sense that this camper obviously is being a good friend. Such a good friend. You're being such a good friend. And her boyfriend even is like helping take care of the dog that she's allergic to that the the other friend is kind of. I know she's she's in a a state. She's being a bad friend. She is. I want to know what um, the friend's boyfriend's living situation is because if she can, if she's still paying rent and wants to like keep all her shit at our camper's cabin and then she goes and stays with her shitty boyfriend, she should take the dog. Truly. And I also think, too, I'm, now that my, my brain is twisting now and I'm, I'm, getting the, I'm getting everything going, I think this is what you should say. You should say, hey, queen, it's 
I know you want to move out and you have a plan to move out in the summer. That's totally fine. I just think the big problem here for me is that your dog Hubba is stinky and he requires a lot of help. I don't mind if you're sleeping at your man's house, but you need to come here before you go there and make sure that he's good for the night. Like you take him out, you get him fed. And if he's just like sleeping on the stinky carpet that he always is, like she don't need to be like trapped. Poor Hubba doesn't need to be in the back of the Jetta oh, on the yeah. blunt ride on the way to the boyfriend's house. Like let Hubba be sedentary. I'm not the grand dam. You know what I mean? So it's like, but she needs to be taking care of him. And then you need a clear date because, and girl, you have an allergy. The best, the best like, thing to lean on is yeah. saying that hey i'm allergic i'm it's really been bothering me just you need to get into the bathroom under good lighting and start photographing those hives build yeah. a case yeah build a case <laughs> put it in a google doc put it on a thumb drive i'm sorry i laughed at this but i think you meant this to be kind of funny but he is so stinky <laughs> Okay, good luck with this camper. Just be open and honest with her. You don't need to target the boyfriend issue right now. You're not going to win that one, and it seems like you're very aware of that. So just kind of deal with Hubba. Baseline, she should be coming over before she's sleeping out and making sure that Hubba is secure for the night and then maybe have a vacation planned the week after she leaves as a, a celebration of experiencing and getting through Hubba trauma. Additional advice, get a Glade plug-in. Scary stories around the campfire. Welcome back to Scary Stories Campers. This one is uh, a perfect combination of the Scary Story segment. It is scary um, in the way that it's just truly embarrassing, but a little spooky, I think. Okay. It's got some spooky behavior in it. All right. Dear counselors, as a person who isn't easily embarrassed, this one is a doozy, but imagining you guys giggling about this inspired me to write it in. My older sister, my old sister, my old sister is also a camper, and I'm not sure if she knows this story. Either way, I'm sure she'll know it's me when the rest of the campers hear it. My boyfriend and I, still together at the time, had only been dating for about a month. My friends and I were going out to the club for Halloween, and I was invited to sleep at my boyfriend's house for the night. Oh, for the first time ever. Uh -huh. My costume leaned funny, not sexy, so I felt comfortable there. His parents sent us off, as parents do, insisting that we take many photos of the night and cackling, reflecting on their wild costumes of yesteryear. Vibes were high, and I was dressed as the legendary prince. Photos included, feel free to share on the podcast. The costume was killer. Is it? Like, yeah, like she did a really great job as prince. So we'll put it on, um, we'll put it on like the um, YouTube episode. I was still new to the drinking scene, so getting carried away was quite easy to do, especially when you're walking around the biggest Halloween club at the Jersey Shore and everyone's screaming, Prince, I knew you were alive, and things of that nature at you. I would love that. I'd be like, oh my God, stop. Like, if you dress up in a funny costume, you're looking for attention. Of course. And I'm saying that from someone who's looking for attention for my costume. You ever like dress up as something really clever and no one gets it? Okay, I'll just go sit in the bathroom with some mini hot dogs and some mustard and cry, because what was all this for? What was I made for? You know, <laughs> what was I made for? To do funny Halloween costumes. That is my purpose in life. One year I dressed up like Caesar. First off, I looked so cute. Like I had like the little gold crown around my head and cute. it was very comfortable. I had sweats on under it. And then I had a bag of salad and chicken and I was a chicken Caesar salad. You're so clever. Everybody thought it was a hoot because they see Caesar. They're like, okay, fine been there done that since the beginning of time and then they see my accessories my accoutrements it was a hit what was the chicken in a baggie yeah it was actually raw chicken it was literally like chicken Ooh. in like the packaging <laughs> that's sticky yeah it was all right and i was a vegetarian back then too so okay so as the night went on the darkness and alcohol crept into my brain into my brain fissures and i had blacked out <laughs> Not okay. the fissures. <laughs> Not the fissures. This reminds me of anal fissures. <laughs> I woke up in the morning to my boyfriend waking me up, and we were not in bed together. I was pretty panicked, realizing I didn't even recognize the room I was in. And he said, my brother's away at school. This is his room. Let me see if I can um, help find out why you're in here. Keep in mind, I did an awful job taking my makeup off, so I had a mustache smudged and some purple smears lingering on my face. Oh, purple smears. <laughs> Purple smears. So she's like a complete disaster in her in her boyfriend's brother's bedroom. Uh, at, but at his house. At okay. his house. And he like woke her up because he's like, where were you last night? Girl, we don't know. He went to talk to his parents and I sat in the worst anxiety you can imagine. Yeah, some of you bitches are getting anxiety because you like danced on a chair. This bitch is like, what? I'm at my 
boyfriend's parents' house. This is real anxiety right now. Oh God. Apparently in the night, I had tried to find the bathroom. Uncomfortably, I meandered past the one in the hallway next to his room, kept going, and accidentally entered his parents' room instead. Oh, no. Waking them up, his mom graciously pointed out the bathroom in their room and said I could use that one. I thanked her, and then after several long minutes of me trying to open their sliding barn bathroom door, <laughs> pissed truck, and confused in the dark, I went in and used the bathroom. What is she, clawing at it like a gerbil in a cage? They're, they're hard to open. So You've said this on the show. You have. But I can picture mom and dad laid up in bed while drunk Prince is just like trying to open the door. What is going on right you, now? You just hear a faint like. Sorry. <laughs> uh, they have a linen closet in the bathroom. And I had for some godforsaken reason taken every towel out no, and lied it on the floor. Girl. When I exited the bathroom, it took less time because I had remembered how the door worked. <laughs> but I guess I had forgotten that, that I was in their room, so I went to climb into bed. His dad, who sleeps only in his underwear, slept on the side of the room. Oh, no. So to get into bed, I climbed right into his side. They stopped me, obviously, and his mom brought me into his brother's empty room to sleep the drunken nightmare off. Um, the nightmare of it all off. Facing them the next day was horrible, but not because of them. My face was as hot as my feet were tearing up the dance floor the night before. <laughs> they laughed with me so and told me of roommate stories long ago that were similar or even worse. But the next Easter, when I met the rest of the family, his dad had to tell them all about her first sleepover when she got in bed with me. Honestly, your dad is allowed to have that bit. He is. Because it may be inappropriate, but... It's Everything his, his you were dad. doing that night was wildly inappropriate. I've never heard of anyone doing anything remotely as crazy as that. Like one part of that story would have been enough. But, but all of it taking the towels out of the linen closet. Yeah, like what, girl, what was but that? But wait, he, let's take a second for the parents because they, it seems like, played it very, very cool and made her feel normal. Oh, and the totally. next morning t by telling her stories about like their own similar experiences or things that they had with roommates so is very much like making it an even playing field. So that was like honestly best case scenario. So like, yeah, like you said, if, if. Your boyfriend's dad has to tell the story. You just got to roll with the punches because yeah. it's part of your lore. Yeah. It's your story. It, it, these are your in-laws at this point. And you guys are still together, which I like. Okay. Love. They are still together? Yeah. They're still together. I love that. Me too. And like they will, lo they love you more for that story because they seem like cool people. And who lets like the, the partner sleep over? You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're pretty chill. Yeah. So she signed off the disaster. Um, the, oh, the distressed camper dressed as Prince in cabin sex. And the outfit is really great. She's so cute. And then she said, this past year I opened up my own dog grooming salon over the moon dog grooming. Binging your episodes during my DIYs and setting up really kept me sane. Every time Zachariah used the phrase over the moon, it made me feel like I was on the right path. Oh, not me getting goosebumps. I know. That's so sweet. You guys are my favorite coworkers because I'm alone with dogs all day listening to the podcast. Love you lots and thanks for everything. Thank you for sharing <laughs> this story with us. Seriously. And thank you to everybody who wrote in today. <clears throat> it's just like so exciting to know that everybody's lives are absolutely ridiculous you guys are so dumb in the best way possible yeah and we're just a big old dump of dumb group of girls at the campfire just sharing stories and, and pissing our pants and laughing i love that this was a dog rumor and the story right before that was like the shitty dog in a diaper i know oh my god the, the story's all really connected today in a really great way yeah thank you guys so much for writing in if you have a story you want to share with us we just might read it if you go to campcounselorspodcast.com or send us an email to campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Yeah, and if you haven't yet, please share the podcast with a friend, post it on your story, um, rate and review as five stars. But if you don't want to, just keep listening. We love that too. Who cares? It's your life. Keep living it. And with that being said, Lights Out Campers. campers.